From the catwalk to the stores to your closet, keeping up with the latest styles fuels a global industry. This is probably about 50 to 60,000 pounds. But there's a dark side to our consumption. What you don't see is this. Garbage bags filled with discarded and unused fabric. Mountains of waste from the fashion industry's design process. This pile behind us right here is actually all of the recycling materials that we pick up from our partner brands. At this nondescript site in Brooklyn, one company, Fab Scrap, has a mission to keep any fabric they can from ending up in landfills. It's estimated that fashion contributes up to 10% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions more than international flights and maritime shipping combined. I don't think it's a secret that the fashion industry is one of the largest polluters on the planet, and not just in terms of the material use and material waste, but also in the way that it uses labor and uses human power. Much of that carbon footprint is generated by clothing production, often made in developing countries, then shipped abroad, worn, and eventually tossed out. 12% of all textile waste happens during the design and production phase of making a garment, and that's where we work, and that is um, millions and millions of pounds. Here at Fab Scrap, they're working to cut down clothing waste. It's not so much the CO2 that's released while it degrades in landfill, it's actually the CO2 savings of not having to create new fabric. Big name fashion brands like J. Crew, Macy's, and Marc Jacobs, and others pay Fab Scrap to collect, sort, recycle, and reuse what they can. It's a painstaking process. Every bag is pretty much a surprise. You never know what types of fabrics will be in it. This one seems to have a lot of fabric headers and swatches. Volunteers go through each bag by hand. Materials like cotton, wool, and polyester get shredded and turned into a product called shoddy. This gets repurposed into different types of insulations for car doors or for walls. You can have it be really thin and light for moving blankets or for flooring. Other materials are put up for resale at their store or online. Fab Scrap estimates it has kept nearly a million pounds of fabric waste out of landfills since it was founded in 2016, but that's not nearly enough. 85% of textiles in the United States end up in landfills or are incinerated. We're doing what we can where we're at with what we have. So globally though, I think that's a drop in the bucket and there's a lot of work to be done. The fashion industry has grown exponentially in the last 20 years. Now a $2.5 trillion industry that employs 75 million people worldwide. That growth fueled in part by fast fashion, inexpensive, trendy clothing, much of it not made to be a wardrobe staple. We're making too much of stuff. We end up having 90% of clothing that, that is thrown out well before the end of its useful life. Why is it problematic? It's almost at this point become mass-produced disposable clothing um, that really is just chasing the trend. The clothing brand Reformation is worn by celebrities like Jessica Alba, Kendall Jenner, and Kelly Ripa. I know who I'm wearing. You want to say it? This is Reformation. Who showed off this Reformation dress on Instagram. The company is working to buck the fast fashion trend. We're focused on making limited collections. If you can make smaller collections and only make more based on the consumer demand, you don't have that that, that end of season waste. We met CEO Hallie Bornstein and Chief Sustainability Officer Kathleen Talbot at one of Reformation stores. We have 100% traceability and this cotton was grown in North South Wales, Australia. The LA-based brand has been betting big that being sustainable can also be profitable. It sometimes could be more expensive. How do you do this and still stay profitable? We set out early on to determine and to uh, prove out that you can both be a profitable business and be sustainable because by definition, it's not sustainable to lose money, right? They look for greener alternatives, like cutting down on the use of synthetics. We actually don't allow for synthetics in a lot of the categories that would be machine washed um, or where we think we have an, a good natural alternative. 60% of all new clothing on the market are made with synthetic fibers derived from fossil fuels. For synthetics, um, it will take over 200 years for it to biodegrade. So just like you know throwing plastics away it's it's the same thing another method using excess fabric others would have thrown away 
15% of our product today is made with dead stock. And dead stock is really fabric that is end of life. It was produced and is not currently being used and has no dedicated purpose right now. In a rare glimpse at their LA factory, Talbot shows us an outfit made entirely out of dead stock. This adorable skirt is actually dead stock. Um, so this is overordered excess fabric that we were able to transform into a very cute skirt. Workers on the factory floor incorporate unused old fabrics into trendy new styles, as well as reimagining vintage clothing for resale. This Chloe dress is a great example where they're actually going to update it and just make it look and feel more relevant to today. So they're going to change the hemline and they're actually going to add some lace detail to the bodice. Do you think there's a responsibility that the fashion industry as a whole has when it comes to protecting the environment? I think consumers are really demanding the change. So when we started putting social posts up 10 years ago on Instagram about sustainability, there was no engagement. Today, it's our most engaged with post. So it's a really big change that's already happened. We know at, to, to mitigate climate change, we have to collectively half our emissions um, in the next decade. By showing it can be done, Reformation hopes to help push their industry into a more sustainable future. I don't think there's a choice anymore. Um, I think brands that are going to survive are going to do the right thing and put the investment in. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.